So today we are discussing about uh, uh, cell divisions that is mitosis and meiosis. Coming to the mitosis, mitosis, mitosis is seen in all the uh, somatic cells. Okay, so it helps in the growth of the organism, mitosis. And meiosis can be seen only in the sex chromosome. Meiosis can be seen in the only in the sex chromosomes. Uh, and the primitive sex cells only, it is, uh, meiosis can be seen. And uh, it is a reduction division for, in order to maintain the chromosomal number, uh, sex chromosomal number. And here the mitosis is seen in all the somatic cells. So coming to the prophase, here the prophase, what happens here is the centrioles are they are reaching the opposite poles and the chromosomes they are divided into two sister chromatids. Here their chromosomes here at the centromere they divide into two sister chromatids and the centrioles appear here. And what happens in the metaphase here is the centrioles reach the opposite poles and the nuclear membrane starting disintegrates and it completely disintegrates in the metaphase. And here the the chromosomes they lie in the metaphase plate okay the centromere gets attached to the centromere gets attached to the achromatic spindle the centromere that get attached to the achromatic spindle and the chromosomes lie in the metaphasic plate in the metaphase okay coming to the anaphase what happens here is there is a division occurs in the centromere gets divided into two thus taking the one sister chromatic here and to the other sister chromatic to the opposite poles. So the centromere give, divides in the anaphase. Okay, and coming to the telophase, telophase the the non sister chromatids they reach the opposite end of the poles. And now happens what happens here is the cell membranes the starts constriction and the cell membrane starts dividing. And here after the telophase, what happens here is the cell membrane divides into two, and also the nuclear the nuclear membrane is also formed. And here we can see the chromatids with the non sister with the other non sister chromatid. Here we can see the chromatids, and the these cells carries the same number of chromosomes that is diploid number of chromosomes okay so in the prophase what happens here is the prophase what happens here is the nuclear membrane start it starts disintegrating and here the chromosomes they are divided into two chromatids nothing but sister chromatids and the centrioles they are they have to reach the opposite poles in the metaphase the centrioles completely reach the opposite poles of the achromatic spindle and the nuclear membrane disappears and here the chromosomes lie in the metaphasic plate and here in the anaphase what happens here is the centromere divides and the chromosomes they are now dragged into opposite poles. Okay and here what happens here is the cell membrane starts dividing into two and here it gives rise to two chromosomes. Two, it gives rise to two cells with identical number of chromosomes. With identical number of chromosomes nothing but diploid number of chromosomes are present here. Okay so that's about the mitosis. Mitosis consists of prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. And now these two cells, uh, cell cells, they enter again, enter into the interphase, I think, but the distinct phase. Okay, again, these two cells again divides into through four pro prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and they pass these, and then their cell division goes on. And now these two cells, after after count, the newly formed cells, they daughter cells, now what happens is they enter into a resting phase called interphase. Okay. And coming to the meiosis, meiosis it is seen in the sex cells and primitive sex cells and it is very very important division because in order to maintain the haploid number of chromosomes, in order to maintain the haploid number of chromosomes, chromosomal number, meiosis it is a very very important division and meiosis otherwise called as a uh, otherwise called as reduction division. Here what happens here is the one from the maternal origin chromosome and one from the paternal origin chromosome, homologous chromosome, they come to each other. Okay, one from the maternal origin and from, from the paternal origin and this process where the non-homologous chromosomes they come to each other at point to point and one from the maternal origin and one from the paternal origin this point this part is we, this we, we call it as synapses and here what happens here is the chromosomes they divide into two sister chromatids here. And they are united at the centromere. Okay, now what happens here is what happens here is the chromosomes they forms synaptic with other chromosomes. These chromosomes they form they form chasma with other chromosomes. Here what happens here is this part of the chromosome get attached to this non-sister chromatid this part by the enzymes called endonucleus as well as lycase. Here what happens here is this chasma of the chromosomes takes place by the presence of enzymes 
endonuclease. The endonuclease cuts this part of the chromosomes and this part of the chromosome. So, and this part of the chromosome get attached to the one from the paternal origin and one from the maternal origin through ligase. So, here what happens here is chiasma takes place and here we can see the crossover of the chromosomes takes place. Here we can see the crossover of the chromosomes takes place by the enzymes called endonuclease and endonuclease as well as the uh, ligase enzymes. And here what happens here is the chromosome slides in the uh, spindle along the plane of the spindle and here what happens here is the centromeres doesn't divide and the chromosomes they reach the opposite poles. Here in the telophase we can see here. Now here what happens here is now in the uh, in the metaphase two now what happens here is the centromeres divide the centromeres divide okay and the chromatids and the chromatids they reach the opposite poles and the chromatids they reach the opposite poles here and here in the anaphase two they, we can see the chromatids divide and the centromere divides and the sister and the chromatids they reach the opposite poles and here we can see here. Because the centromere doesn't divide, so thus maintaining the haploid number of chromosomes. Because the centromere doesn't divide here. The centromere, we can see, the centromere doesn't divide here, thus maintaining the thus maintaining the haploid number of chromosomes. And the metaphase to see here, the centromere doesn't divide here, and and in the and in the telophase we can see the centromeres doesn't define and in the metaphase 2 now what happens here is in the metaphase 2 it is similar to that of the mitosis the centromeres they divide and the chromatids they reach the opposite poles and here we can see four haploid gametes are formed okay we can see four haploid gametes are formed here we can see the crossover combinations are present here and the one from the paternal origin, one from the maternal origin is present here and also here one half of the crossover combinations can be seen and four haploid number of gametes, four haploid number of gametes are formed here. Okay, so mitosis is a seen in all the somatic cells and the meiosis is seen only in the sex cells. Okay. So here what is important here is the crossover takes place and the chromosomes they are arranged here and this is called tetrod and uh, here they, they come to lie each other on this the chromatids they overlap each other and here what happens here is the crossover of the chromosomes takes place by the enzyme endonuclease and here what happens here is what happens here is in the uh, meta in the in the anaphase uh, in the anaphase what happens here is the chromosomes, the centromeres, they doesn't divide, they doesn't divide and they reach the opposite poles. that's maintaining the haploid number of chromosomes and here in the telophase we can see here the cell membranes are formed here and here what happens here is the, now in the metaphase 2, what happens here is the centromere device and the chromatids, the sister chromatids, they reach the opposite poles. And we can see that the four haploid number of chromosomes are formed here. Thus, thus meiosis it is a reduction difference thus maintaining the haploid number of chromosomes, one from paternal origin, other one from the maternal origin. Okay, so maintaining the haploid number of chromosomes and again it divides into them, thus it gets a diploid number of chromosomes. Okay, after the centromere divides here, they reach the opposite spindles. Okay. So that's about the meiosis and that's about the mitosis. So coming to the gene structure, coming to the gene structure, coming to the gene structure. So, genes are nothing but the segments of DNA. Genes are nothing but the segments of DNA. Okay, the are linearly arranged in a chromosome. Green genes are linearly arranged in a chromosome. Okay, the genes are linearly arranged in a linear fashion. They are arranged. The position of gene on chromosome, we call it as locus. The position of genes in a chromosome, we call it as locus. Genes are nothing but the segments of DNA. Genes are nothing but the segments of DNA. And the position of gene on a chromosome, we call it as locus. And the genes maintain the inheritance of characters from parent to offspring. They maintain the inheritance of characters and from parents to offspring offspring and also they maintain the 
cell integrity, cell function and also they maintain the biological as well, biochemical as well as the immunological functions. They also maintain the bio biochemical as well as the immunological functions and the position of gene in a chromosome we call it as locus. Okay, what are the types of genes? What are the types of genes are, for example, dominant gene. Here, the gene is not suppressed. Okay, the gene is not suppressed. Example, tallness. The gene is not suppressed. Example, tallness. It is called dominant gene. It is seen in homozygous condition, dominant gene. And coming to the recessive gene. Coming to the recessive gene, here the gene is suppressed. Here the gene is suppressed and it is seen in heterozygous condition. It is seen in heterozygous condition. It's small t, capital T. Okay. So, heterozygous condition, the gene is suppressed. In the dominant gene, the gene doesn't suppress. Example, tallness and the recessive gene. Here, the gene is suppressed. It is seen in heterozygous condition. Okay. And coming to the sex linker gene. Sex linker gene. So, I'm uh, talking about what are the different types of genes, okay. So, sex linker gene, it is seen in only sex chromosome, whether it may be X chromosomes or Y chromosomes, usually seen in females. Sex linker genes usually seen in females. Examples of the sex linker genes are hemophilia, sex linker gene examples, okay. Sex linker gene, it is seen in X chromosomes as well as the Y chromosome, usually seen in females. Examples of the sex linker genes are the hemophilia, Hemophilia as well as and color blindness as well as color blindness. Okay. So sex linker gene and sex limited gene. Sex limited gene it is only limited to sex chromosome. It is seen in males. Sex limited gene. Sex limited gene it is seen in Y chromosome. It is seen in Y chromosome. Example is baldness. We know that baldness is seen only in males. It is seen in Y chromosome that is baldness. So sex limited gene. So what are the types of gene? Dominant gene it is, it is in homogeneous condition. The Example, tallness and the gene is not suppressed here. As you have seen, it is, uh, it is here, the gene is suppressed, it is seen in heterozygous condition. And coming to the sex linker gene, it is seen in both in sex chromosomes, whether it may be X or Y, usually seen in female. Example is hemophilia and color blindness. And sex limited gene, it is particularly limited to only one chromosome, it is usually seen in uh, Males, Y chromosome, it is usually seen in males. Example is baldness and co dominant genes. If the both genes are dominant with each other, if the both genes are dominant with each other, and we call they, them, them as co dominant genes. If the both genes are dominant with each other, we call them as co dominant gene. Co dominant gene co-dominant gene example is the abo blood group abo blood group here a is the dominant gene and also b is also dominant gene and the resulting offspring may be a or b group b blood group or ab blood group here both genes are dominant with each other that is called co-dominant genes and they are responsible for number of tribes okay and the response whether they may be a b or ab so that's about the Co-dominant gene. So, what are genes? Genes are nothing but the segments of DNA. They are responsible for the inheritance of characters from parent to offspring. They are linearly arranged in a chromosome. The position of gene in a chromosome is called as locus. And here we have different varieties of genes are present. Go dominant gene, it is, it is seen in homogeneous condition, example tallness, and the gene is not suppressed here. And the recessive gene, the gene is suppressed here, it is seen in heterogeneous condition. And coming to the next one is the sex linker gene. Sex linker gene, it is seen in sex chromosome, whether maybe X or Y chromosomes. Usually seen in females, example hemophilia and color blindness. And coming to the sex limited gene, it is seen in males, example baldness. A y chromosome is related to Y chromosome and co-dominant genes, if both genes are dominant with each other and responsible for a number of traits, then we call it as co-dominant gene. Example is the ABO blood group, whether the, if the parent is A and the B, the offspring may be A, they may A group or B group or AB group. Okay, so they are nothing but the co-dominant gene. So that's about the gene structure. Okay.
ఇందులో ఇప్పుడు మెండల్ లాస్ ఉన్నాయి ఈ దీంట్లో ఇంకా మెండల్ so coming to the mendel's laws of mendelism and we will discuss here in the mendelism we will discuss about mendel's laws of inheritance and coming to the three laws of mendel's laws of inheritance are present here one is law of segregation during gamete fusion what happens here is the allele for each gene segregated each, each other okay during gamete fusion what is happens here is the allele for each gene is segregated with each other so each gamete consists of only one allele for each gene so each gamete consists of only one allele for each gene we know what are allele a pair of genes controlling one trait that is called allele okay so you in law what is law of segregation is during gamete fusion allele for each gene segregate with each other and in gamete so only in so each gamete consists of only one allele for each gene here we can see here g g g g g so each gamete consists of only one allele for each gene okay so only one allele for each gene so here this is the phenotype okay and coming to the law law of independent assignment and here law of independent assignment genes for different traits aggregates independently genes for different traits aggregate independent sorry not aggregate segregate independently here we can see the box here and here this is the advanced generation traits here and here we can see capital uh, small s capital s small b capital s small b and here we can see capital s ca ca capital s capital b and here we can see small s and small b and we can see the um, chart here in the two generation chart we have ss bb here is the phenotype and sb sb and here is the sb sb here and here we have s b and small s b and this is the capital s b and this is the small s b here here in the after generation so each trait different trait they can segregate independently in the mendel's laws of independent assortment so different traits can they get segregate independently and coming to the law of dominance so some are dominant genes and some are in recessive genes so the dominant allele the dominant allele is differently shows defect in its dominant trait so the dominant genes some are dominant genes and some are recessive genes so the dominant genes will differentially show its dominant effect in the future generations that is the law of law of dominance okay so what is law of segregation means allele for each gene segregate each other so during gamete fusion so each gamete cons consists of only one allele for each gene here is the phenotype zero type sorry and here law of independent assignment means here genes for different traits they can segregate independently okay and we have f2 generation here is present here and this is the f1 generation is here and f2 generation is present here and coming to the law of dominance here some are dominant genes and some are recessive genes this dominant gene will differentially show its dominant effect in future generation that is the law of dominance okay so so mendel's uh, mendel's proposed three laws one is law of segregation law of independent assignment and law of dominance okay so that's about the mendelism మెంటలిజం అనేది ఒక చిన్న టాపిక్ అంతే దీన్ని దానికి అటాచ్ చేయగలిగితే చేసే మెంటలిజం